Good morning, friends. We are brewing a Belgian pale today. Why? I don't know. I saw the BJCP, thought, well, why not? So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna take you through the process in case you've never brewed or you're just curious about it. And we'll start from the beginning. Here we go. We've collected water from the sink and now we've got it on the burner here, raising the temperature. And then when that reaches 160 degrees, we're gonna transfer it over here and add it to our grain. See our grain is in the cooler here. We ordered this online, already milled by the company we ordered from. Once that water is added to the grains, if we reach the right temperature, we're gonna activate enzymes in the grains that are gonna break down the starches into sugars that are then fermentable. Our water has reached 160 degrees, so now we're just transferring it over on top of the grains here in our mash tun. Now 160 degrees is actually higher than the temperature we want, but it's gonna lose some temperature because the mash tun is cold, the grains are cold, and you know, it's transferring, it's uh, falling out of there too, so it's gonna lose some through that process. So we're actually shooting for between 145, 150 degrees and that'll be perfect for the enzymes. What we'll do is we'll drain all the water here into our mash tun. Then we're gonna seal it up. We're gonna leave it go for a couple hours. Now, most people only do a one hour mash. I'm gonna do a little longer. I've got some chores to do inside. I gotta make lunch for myself and my son. So we'll let it go. It's not gonna hurt anything. And then we'll come back once that conversion is complete. We're gonna make a starter for this batch. So we're using the proper starter. Uh, this is the second time I've used it. Really liked it last time. My yeast had a great start. So what we do is we're gonna add the can of starter here in our vessel. We're gonna also add a can of boiled then cooled water. Then make sure everything's the right temperature and we're gonna pitch Belgian 3522. This is the Belgian Arden. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And then we're gonna let this go on the stir plate here for 24 hours and then we're going to add it to our work. Look at it go! Now we're transferring the hot wort from the mash tun into the boil kettle. It's called wort now because it's got all those lovely sugars from the grain. Got a nice boil going now. We're gonna go ahead and boil for a full hour, even though our first hop addition isn't until 30 minutes. Just wanna be sure we drive off any DMS or other off flavors or things like that. Uh, plus, we put enough water in at the beginning that we'll have plenty to spare. We've been boiling for 30 minutes. It's time for our hop addition. Uh, we're keeping it simple with this. We really want the yeast to shine. So we've got an ounce of Fuggle and an ounce of Glacier. And we're going to put them in for the last 30 minutes. Here we go. Ah! Into the pool. Did we get it all? Yeah, I think so. 
And then that's going to hang out in there for 30 minutes, and then we're going to chill everything down. So one hour boil, only 30 minutes with hops though. Let's give it a stir. Got about 10 minutes left, so I'm going to go ahead and toss in the Whirl Flock tablet. I'm going to crush it up. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe not with one hand. Uh, there we go. Crush it up just a little bit. I don't think you have to, but it makes me feel better. There we go. Get that in there. What that's going to do is that's going to help the proteins coagulate as it cools. It's going to make the beer a little clearer in the end. All right, friends. Our one hour boil is up. We've got a device called an immersion chiller placed in the boil kettle here. Basically, it's just a bunch of stainless steel that's all wound up. And then we get the hose. There you go, you can follow the water. We run cold water through it. And what it does is it just uses that cool water to cool down our wort. If we look, here's our outfeed here. Okay, come on back. This is kind of fun to watch. See all those proteins in there? There's some proteins, there's some hops, and they all kind of group together, and they're gonna sink to the bottom, and they're gonna leave us with some really clear work. Now it's not beer yet. It doesn't become beer until we add the yeast and the fermentation happens. But we're close. Mmm, we're close. This seemed like a good idea. But it's hot. It's July in Ohio. It's real hot. This is taking too long to cool down. We gotta come up with a plan B. Now we're transferring from our boil kettle into our fermentation bucket. I like buckets. The, they're cheap. They clean up really easily. I can fit my whole arm down in there. And, you know, if, if one goes bad, if I get some bugs in there that I don't want, it's 15 bucks for me to buy a new one. Not a big deal. So we're gonna transfer into here. We're gonna let it fall like that. That's gonna help to integrate some oxygen in. And that'll help the yeast start out. And let's see, we're about oh, just under 100 degrees right now. This is not our pitching temp. This is a bit high. What we're going to do is we're going to move it to the bucket. Then we're going to move the bucket in the basement. With the AC on, the basement stays around 65, 70 at the highest. Uh, YE says that this Belgian Ardennes yeast can go up to 75. So what we'll do is, we'll let this cool overnight in the basement. If our sanitation practices are good, we won't have a problem. And we'll pitch the yeast tomorrow morning, right about before lunch. That'll give our yeast starter about uh, 24 hours, which should be enough time for really get that yeast going. And then we'll have to check back in later and see how this beer tastes. All right, friends, we've made it to the basement. We're gonna let these guys cool. Here's our Belgian pale. Here is a session me that I did while we were doing the Belgian pale. You know what I forgot? I forgot to get the starting gravity of our Belgian pale. That's all right, we'll go back to Beersmith and we'll figure out what that was. We're going to pitch our yeast tomorrow once we're sure that everything has gotten down to temperature. If you are curious about the recipe for this Belgian pale, we've got six pounds of Belgian Pilsen, six pounds of Munich, uh, we use the Weirman. We've got a quarter pound of Crystal 80, quarter pound of Caramunich, Munich, and a quarter pound of Biscuit. And then we also had 30 minutes addition of 
Glacier and Fuggle Hops. It's the next day. Our yeast starter has gone for about 24 hours. So it is looking pretty amazing. All that beautiful yeast in there. Now we're going to pitch the yeast into our wort. Here we go. See if we can do this one handed. Uh oh. Lost the stir bar. That's okay. We'll just have to remember to get it when we clean out the fermenter. Not the first time, probably won't be the last. All right, now we're just gonna seal up this fermenter and we're gonna let it sit till it's done going. Might take anywhere from a few days to a couple weeks. At this temperature, it'll probably take about a week, maybe even less. And then we'll have beer. Delicious, delicious beer, hopefully. So there you have it friends, that's our Belgian Pale Ale Brew Day. Hopefully you enjoyed going along with me uh, making that new beer. And if you want to see how it tastes, if you want to get our description of it, hit like, hit subscribe, so that you know when that video is coming up. See you later.